Hi everyone, this is uh, Stephen Stewart. I'm the CEO and Chairman of QC Copper and Gold, and I'm joined here by our Vice President of Exploration and Director Charles Beaudry. Uh, we're here today to update everybody on the news that just came out. Um, uh, the drills are again <coughs> on the Opamisca, and we are working quickly towards publishing our updated mineral resource uh, estimate. Um, for those of you who don't know our project, I'll just give you a quick summary. Uh, we, uh, we own and operate the Opamisca Copper Mine Complex. It's in the Shibugamu camp of Quebec. Uh, in the end of 2021, we came out with a over 100 million ton resource at nearly 0.9% copper equivalent. That's a pit constrained resource, uh, really took the market by storm. Uh, ever since then, we have been uh, deploying our very strong treasury uh, into aggressively drilling that out. We, we have uh, been aimed at optimizing that pit. Almost all of this drilling is in the pit, uh, aimed at what we have described as drilling waste into ore. Uh, again, uh, trying to capture some of that lower grade material and bringing, um, bringing that resource into, uh, excuse me, bring that mineralization into the updated resource, which we're just in the process of publishing. The news release came out, said we're gonna uh, put it out for, for uh, June of 2023. So we're not too far away. And, and there's no better person here than to get the update directly from uh, Mr. Charles Beaudry. So uh, welcome, Charles. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. So look, I just gave a very high level um, overview uh, of, of the, the, the company, but I think people want to hear from you to, to recap 2022. It's been a very busy year for you and your team and all those drill rigs. So, so what's been the area of focus? What's the recap from your perspective? Yeah, well, uh, if uh, if you recall, immediately uh, after we published the uh, the uh, mineral resource estimate in twenty one, we uh, we we embarked on a on a uh, fairly uh, aggressive drill program. Uh, like you said, primarily focused inside the pit of the uh, of the conceptual pit that we defined. Um, the objective of the uh, of that uh, that program was was uh, was uh, uh, multi multifold. Uh, on the one hand. Uh, we knew that there was uh, that we were getting some some pretty decent results around the saddle zone, and and I'll come back to the saddle zone in a second. But uh, the other thing also was 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 clear was that up until the MRE, we hadn't really drilled uh, significantly uh, through the uh, old stopes um, for a number of reasons. But uh, we decided on the uh, 2022 drill program that we would. We would make a concerted effort to to drill to the stopes, which we did, and we developed the methodology. Uh, as long as our stopes are less than four, five or six meters wide, about two drill rods, we're able to we're able to pretty consistently get get uh, get through the uh, the stopes and be able to drill on the other side. And we've also we brought in some additional rods, some BQ and some uh, HQ rods, which allows us to start the hole in a core in a in a bigger diameter and then to telescope. To smaller diameter uh, rods as we as we get through the through the stopes to secure to anchor the stope with the with the with the the bigger pipe. So anyway, so that that was uh, that was an important um, an important aspect to it. And also the um, uh, we wanted to look at more detail. Uh, so did some drilling on the uh, on the um, uh, the eastern veins, and uh, and we're going to be drilling this this winter. I'm gonna I'm gonna show basically. Um, my my screen, and uh, you can see here um, basically what we're showing. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm just going to turn on very quickly and turn off the the original mine uh, uh, drill holes that we're using. Uh, so this is, uh, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. But this is a, a, the area uh, really where where it's the it's the it's the historical. Uh, mine drilling mostly underground, but some quite a few holes from surface also, and that we were we are using and recompiling that. We're going to talk to a bit uh, in more detail, but you you can see that in the in the area where we call the uh, the saddle zone, um, the uh, there wasn't really much drilling by the by the mine, and there was no real no no underground workings, and and the reason is because they did do some drilling historically, but the their grades were too low for what they were looking for. Uh, as underground operation, and uh, so they they kind of neglected this this area between the Perry and and the and the Springer, and uh, and that's an area that that you know under the conditions of an open pit, 
uh, th this area is actually quite quite attractive. And what's what's particularly interesting about the uh, about about the saddle uh, saddle zone area is that as the as the name implies, it's an area where the pit actually comes up near to near surface. So it's a it's a lot shallower pit between the peri and the uh, and and the Springer nodes or or, or deposits. And um, and and the uh, the 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 uh, the side effect, if you want, of, uh, of of adding tons to the saddle zone is going to allow us to deepen the pit on both sides, uh, on the Perry and on the uh, and on the um, uh, on the Springer, particularly the mill area. So so that's a, that's a real positive, and uh, and we do expect that that's going to expand the the resource. We have to keep in mind that the bottom of the pit is still in ore. It's just that because of the strip ratio we can't mine it profitably and that's why the uh, that's why the, the the pit stops there but the but the mineralization does does continue at depth underneath the uh, underneath the pit both at Perry and and, and at Springer and we can see uh, so what we're looking at here is the uh, the the holes in black are the ones that were included in the uh, in the in the MRE whereas the ones in blue is holes that we drilled since then and the and the colors that are in green are the colors that we're going to drill this winter. So it's a, a area particularly for two reasons. There's two two basically two reasons for drilling this winter. One is uh, some uh, some some targets that we generated through the uh, through the ongoing drilling and the ongoing compilation that we're doing. And the other reason is because uh, in some areas the uh, the ground was too soft. We couldn't drill properly in the summertime, so we had to wait for the for the the frozen winter months in order to drill. So that's basically the uh, the, the 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 story there. So in terms of what we got from these blue holes, if you want, like when we're talking about, it, because we're we're publishing in the news release, we're republishing the whole list of the uh, of the the mineralized intersections that 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 we uh, that that we encountered, and um, and so the. Um, uh, the the uh, results uh, are confirmed for the most part what we were looking for. We're getting some uh, some intersections in the foot wall of the veins, which is which is a consequence of our, us drilling through the stopes, and uh, and we're we're expanding the uh, particularly expanding the 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 uh, the saddle zone, which is going to allow us to to deepen the pit. So just as a summary, there the saddle zone is a, is a key part of the the deposit. We expect it to ultimately change the depth and the geometry of those pits. Because for those who don't know, the the sort of the the southwestern part is this was the Springer mine, and the northeastern part is the Perry mines. And we've defined mineralization in and around them, and in, in, in between there is the saddle zone, and that just changes everything. So that's as everybody can see there. There's a quite a, quite a few drill holes. The blue dots represent drill holes there in the saddle zone. Right in the middle of the pauses, and we we expect that could have a lot of bang for our buck uh, in terms of uh, yeah. And, and and what's cool there is that if we deepen the pit, it has no impact on the uh, on the you know, on the on the on the community of Chapet. There's no it's 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 to the north, and it doesn't it doesn't impinge anywhere. So it's it's a good it's a good area to deepen the pit. It's a really good area, no doubt about that. Okay, well let's start. Let's talk uh, briefly about uh, the other bit of news that we released. Is that we're going to do the final leg, is the ten thousand meters of drilling, and uh, we had it up there before. Everybody could see, or could have seen there the the eastern veins, which is the the mineralization that sort of runs east off the the top part of the Springer there. So we think that's an area that we can add some tons. So I mean, really, this this final ten thousand meters before we publish this updated uh, resource in June is we're going to have three rigs. So we're drilling very quickly, and it's really about plugging some gaps in the model that uh, that we've done that reflects all of those, those drilling since 2021's MRE. And then, you know, trying to catch some, uh, what we call as low-hanging fruit, and we'll just see see how much mineralization we can uh, pick out of those areas. Is that a fair assessment, Charles? That is that is basically in a nutshell is what uh, what is what go is going on and of course you know uh, in parallel to that we have a team of uh, of of, uh, of geos that are that is that is compiling the historical data from the mine uh, if we if we remember uh, we had captured uh, essentially well yeah we had captured all of the assays or most of the assays. Uh, from the from the from the old mine that was data that was entered by others by the vendor particularly and uh and what we decided because the, because we we uh, there was a, a number of uh, of of assays that were missing from the uh, from the from the uh, from the package so we we decided to actually redo that and make sure that we captured all of the assays properly 
and at the same time we we uh, we decided to capture the geology which is really the 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 the, the most difficult part is the is capturing the geology the good part is that is that the 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 mine did they did a really good job of uh, of describing the mineralized intervals the mineralization that they Charles, let me interrupt just to sort of so people understand when you say capture the geology i mean it's it's really what what we're doing be specific is we're going through the logs and we're matching the you call it the textual or sort of the, the verbal description or the written description of the rocks so that you know uh, we can correlate that to the assays so we can ultimately domain the geology and create hard boundaries is that fair that is very well put uh, Stephen uh to, it's exactly what we're trying to do the idea behind that is that when you're doing a resource estimate the, the 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 rule if you want or the best practice requires that you that you include all of the data that you have available okay uh, more often than not we often see especially with historical data we often see they just capture the assays okay that's that's a very typical thing that people do uh, because it's objective right it was that assay, assay in the lab whereas the geology often it's you know, but we found by looking at the data we found that the that the uh, the, the logs from the mine were very good quality and even even where the 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 assaying was discontinuous okay they have descriptions of of low grade mineralization uh, in in the logs and uh, so we're going to use that to help us define the end you know define the end mineralized envelopes around the around, around the existing veins or around the stopes if you want and uh, and that's going to be uh, that's going to essentially lead to a more robust model literally that's that's really what uh, what we expect that it's going to do yeah, no, I think, you know, as we said in the news release, I think I, I was quoted as saying, look, we, we put a lot of care into this uh, mineral resource estimate. It was a lot of work. And as we, we were just discussing, you know, we have a huge amount of data in this project and it's been a blessing. I think it's really fast track this project uh, in a lot of respects, but it's also a lot of work to make sure that we get it right. So uh, I think, you know, hats off to you and your team who have taken, uh, you know, worked a lot of long hours to, uh, uh, make this database as sound as possible because um, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's public. it's delayed. Yeah, it's delayed the uh, somewhat, but uh, but it, it's you know, it's really hard to predict when you start out on these things. Uh, you know how long, how you know how many man hours do you require to capture the the geology in sixteen thousand drill holes? You know, it's it's uh, it's very difficult to um, it's it's very difficult to estimate the timing on that. And and it was it took considerably longer than than expected. We were we were hoping to finish all this by by you know October November of uh, of last fall, and uh, and it just you know it took three four months more that uh, to do that. So anyway, but oh, we're there, yeah, that's, and that's... it's one and it's one time. Eh? It's it's just you do it once that's it that's it where once it's done it's going to carry through through the development of the project oh well look it's it's it, as i was saying it's extremely important data it's important that we do it right uh the first time and um you know we uh we have to create a, the best product we possibly can so in the grand scheme of things a few months is no big delay yeah uh, look moving forward uh 2023 uh as i said our target is is june to come out with this uh updated uh mineral resource estimate we offer no guarantees of course but that's that's uh, what our our team has come up with, and we think it's achievable. Uh, when we do that, when we do publish that, we certainly hope to take the market by storm, just like we did when we first came out with the 100 million tons. Uh, we, we hope to uh, capture an awful lot of attention with a nice big open pit resource right in the middle of Quebec. Uh, and we hope that copper continues to run as it has in 2023. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about but what we're going to be doing afterwards. So, I mean, really, it's it's it's, it's early days on the open MISCA when you really think about it here. We've got, we will have defined, a, you know, an optimized open pit. And then we've got to take first pass at engineering and economics, which is, you know, will we'll be published in the form of a, a preliminary economic assessment. Um, you know, I think we, we, we talked about that's probably about a 12-month exercise. We don't want to get too deep into, you know, the, the forecasting of uh, get, a, get ahead of ourselves. But um, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work that we've already started about, but I mean, I think that's really going to be uh, sh the shifting of, of our priorities towards the second half of 2023. Um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, I was going to say, yeah, there, there's, like you said, there's, there's two, there's two elements. Once we come out with the MRE, this, this, uh, this, uh, this revised resource is, is, is literally going to be ready for prime time. OK, I mean, I don't know what the uh, what this, the uh, the the distribution, the classification is going to be for for, you know, for the for the for the pit. 
uh, obviously there's going to there's going to be uh, the three categories are, are are certainly going to be there as they were in the in the first uh, MRE, but but uh, but more importantly is that is that our this MRE is going to be sitting on a much more robust and much more rigorous interpretation of the of the deposit and it's going to carry it's going to carry through 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 the, the the development because don't we mustn't kid ourselves there's still lots of drilling to be done on the deposit because we're we're going to we're going to have a lot of areas that are going to be inferred and 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 we can't make reserves with inferred so we're going to have to drill a considerable amount to get the 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 material to to uh, to to the at least indicated category and and also we want to focus very much on the on the starter pit which which uh, I'll I'll show my screen again but the 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 starter the starter pit is the area where the uh, where the glory hole is, which people can see behind behind my my uh, my headshot is the is the is the glory hole, and that's the area just to, right in the nose of the of the fold. Uh, but you can see in the in the pink outline, this uh, this is uh, the the eleven million ton two two small uh, eleven million ton uh, starter pits. There's a good. We're we're co we're confident that's going to expand a bit. We're gonna. It's going to be a bit. It's going to well, be bigger than critical. I mean, that just that that you know, talking about the PEA. That's where economics come into play. It's Absolutely. That day, it's that high grade early day um, resource that goes through the mill that pays back your capital that really enhances the the IRR NPV. So you know, yeah, I'm 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 quite interested to see, and I know we've discussed that we anticipate the starter pit. Is going to be a more material part of of this updated resource as well. So that's yes. really relevant yes. for the MRE. So yeah, so the MRE, you know, underway. Excuse me, the, the PEA starting in the second half, um, really sinking our teeth into it. But at the same time, our, our broad, broader project, we have yet to really systematically drill out the Cook, uh, the Robotai, which is the third and the fourth mine of the, the Opamisco when it was operated by Falcon Bridge. Uh, and as well, we have the Roger project, which is up to the north uh, northeast of us, but it's on the rail. So, I mean, I think, you know, there's yeah. in, in, in parallel with the engineering and economics on the open pit, as we've just shown there, um, we're looking to bring on more potentially more satellite deposits that could add scale to the operations. The yeah. Unit. And, and uh, we uh, and a point that I'd like to make about about all that whole story. I mean, Roger is is what it is. OK, it's we, we there there is a resource on that. Um, it is primarily a, a gold resource, open pitable, but it has a copper credit. And right now we're doing some metallurgical work on some samples from Roger to see if that material could be amenable to the same processing as uh, open misca, which would which would add another 20, possibly, you know, if we expanded that more and more exploration on Roger, we could maybe expand it to 30 million tons at, at about, you know, about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 uh, gram per ton equivalent, which would be, uh, you know, close to 1% copper. Uh, equivalent if we if we put it back to 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 uh, equivalent copper grade so so that would be that would be significant uh, addition to the uh, to to open misca and it's close enough we could truck that there's a lot of forestry roads around uh, around Chape and Shibugamu and we can travel on those roads and they're public roads and we can travel on them with uh, with very large trucks we're not we're not limited uh, as with the highway uh, the paved highway we're not limited to uh, to thirty ton vehicles, so it's. Oh well, like, uh, I mean, look to me, it's just that yes, we you know we we owned the, you know the Cook, the Robitaille, yeah. and the Roger, but to me, it's just indicative of what the whole region, the whole camp. I mean, we do exactly. this as a exactly. play. If we can establish a a mill, a large mill at the yeah. Open Miska, then yeah. everything in the Shibugamu camp fundamentally changes, and the way that the geology has been approached, which traditionally has been an underground situation changes. So there are an awful lot of, uh, uh, call it orphaned gold yep. and copper resources around, yep. some of which we own, some of which we do not. But yep, if correct. You know, the prospect of a, a localized mill, then everything changes. We add scale and this whole camp uh, gets reborn again. And, and, and once again, the open mesca becomes a legendary uh, uh, district. And if we if we just add to that the the work that we did, we've done at the at the uh, uh, open mesca, has has led to a, a perhaps a reinterpretation of the of the of the of the mineralization, the timing of the mineralization in relation to other other uh, elements in in the district, and and it has opened up uh, some some uh, possibilities of targeting that that we're we're currently looking at 
because we have it, you know, we have a 25,000 hectare uh, property in the area. It's quite large. And, uh, and, and there's some important features, structural features that we can observe elsewhere that are favorable to the same style of mineralization. So we're going to be looking at that too. And, that, and that's, uh, that'll, that'll, that'll be uh, uh, in the second half of 23 and into, into 24, we'll be doing some more regional exploration at the same time that we're moving forward on open as a, as a, as a, as a real project. All right. Well, look, uh, Charles, that's a great update. Let's leave it there for now. I think that's uh, very helpful to the uh, to our, our viewers and our shareholders. Uh, very proud to have that news release out there. Uh, give some detailed guidance on on uh, when when we're going to be delivering it and what challenges and work and drilling is ahead of us. Uh, for any questions, uh, both Charles and I are available. We'll leave our contacts uh, at the end of this presentation, and we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Bye bye.